Okay, so we're here outside Dublin at the wonderful barn. You can see right behind me here. What a strange looking building, but it's great. We're going to do a test today. Canon 60 against the Fuji X-T2. You can see them here. We have them lined up beside each other. We're going to do the same settings on both cameras. I'm going to see how they do right up against each other. Okay, so this video would not be possible at all unless I had a Fuji X-T2 to test. And I reached out to one of my friends because I couldn't get it rented from anywhere in Ireland. And one of my friends actually was willing to let me use this camera. So I'm going to introduce him to here now. How about him? So say hi to Remy. This is one of the best street photographers in Ireland. Just check his page out. The links are in the description below. Check his stuff out. Really, really talented guy. And he's really nice because he, he let me take that. Like, he let me use his camera. Okay, we're in the studio now and we're going to do the second part of this test. I am aware that the first part was pretty brief. Uh, we were tied for time. We were running it out very quickly where we were. And as well as that, I didn't really want to spend too much time uh, doing that kind of video because there's plenty of them videos. If you want to see how an XC2 works or how a 60 works, there's loads on YouTube. The focus I want to do is actually comparing the files. This is the, the meat and the potatoes of it all is you can use a camera all you like, but if you're not going to get the image quality, you're not going to buy the camera. And that's where my head is thinking because I'm actually considering switching from Canon to Fuji because I'm at a point now, I love this camera. I do love the 6D, but it's such a big camera. I'm just fighting with myself wondering, do we really need in this day and age, a camera this big and heavy? And that's why I'm doing the test, and that's why I've been so excited and I've been dying to test out the Fuji X-T2. I've heard such great things about it, and finally I have it. I had it at my hands, and I get to test it. I think the mirrorless question is the same question that was being asked back in the day when iPhones first came out. Like you hear the question from the biggest companies in the phone industry. Who's going to use a touch screen? Who's not going to want to have buttons there? And look at us now, every phone is touch screen. Everything we do is touch screen. Uh, even computers now are going totally touch screen, like the Microsoft Surface Pro, Wacom's own mobile studio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything's going touch screen. And I think the mirrorless way of thinking and the mirrorless technology is the way forward and if Canon and Nikon and other companies like that, if they don't catch on to this quick enough, they're going to lose out and they're going to be the same as Nokia. Look at Nokia. Nokia back in the day were the biggest company. Nobody could touch them. Where are they now? We've Apple, Samsung and Sony leading the race when it comes to smartphones and Nokia's been left behind. They've now jumped onto the Android bandwagon but they're nowhere to be seen. Is this the old way of thinking when it comes to cameras size-wise and weight-wise and is mirrorless the way forward? Well, I'm going to see right now when I test these files. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this right now. Okay, so we're in Lightroom here and you can see I have all the photos lined up, ready to go. So on the left, we have all the Canon photos. On the right, we have all the Fuji. The Fuji are highlighted in green. I just went through all these photos to make sure I had all the corresponding photos together and there was no uh, drifters in the middle of that. And you can see as well, I have a little bit of settings done to each of these photos. The only thing I've done is I've just matched in the white balance as the Fujis were shot with a white balance of daylight and the Canon shots have been shot with a white balance of shade. So I've just set everything to shade. You can see up here, the shade setting, it's 7500 plus 10 magenta. It's one of my more preferred ones. Uh, don't forget this whole test is to see if I'm going to switch from Canon to Fuji. So all the settings I'm using here, F8, shooting at sunset. I'm setting, I'm setting this up as an actual landscape uh, shoot. So this is the scenario I needed, I needed to be. Uh, I don't really shoot much with a lot of bokeh, so I'm not really looking for a lot of bokeh. So for these settings, I have them set as if I was shooting uh, at a landscape location. So let's go through all these now. So we have the, the first Canon photo, so let's put that into the reference view. And I've already got the Fuji lined up as well. And let's have a look at this. So I'm gonna view the Fuji first because I'm more interested in them. I've seen Canon loads. And yeah, so the middle of the image will be, come back out again. So the middle of the image is really here, there's no real detail, so I'll go a little bit left. I'm just gonna go up here and see. And wow, there's a lot of detail there. That is great detail. Let's have a look at it side by side with the Canon. I don't know how to pair these up with the zoom is connected to the two. I've never really done this before. I really should have looked into it beforehand. Oh, slow down there, you're getting excited. Uh, wow, you can't really tell that the difference between these two is the left is an APS-C sensor and the right is a full frame sensor. That is staggering. That is un unbelievable. Considering the price difference in both camera and lenses. 
So the Fuji actually is native ISO is 200 and the native ISO for the Canon is actually 100 but it can extend down to uh, 50. So when I have the Fuji at the minute here, it's actually extended down to 100. So we'll go up to the next one then for the Canon. So that's ISO 200 and we'll do the same then for the Fuji. Oops, it is. So Canon on the right and I need to drag and drop into the Fuji. And you can see as well as that the Canon was metering a lot brighter than the Fuji and I did notice that on location at the time. Uh, we actually used the metering off the Canon to set the settings and then we just matched the settings on the Fuji. Um, I wanted them to be exactly the same, I didn't want any discrepancies at all. So this is a good example of uh, just how the metering is, is working on this. And let's have a look now, uh, this is the Fuji at its native ISO. Let's see the Canon at ISO 200. Uh, Canon, I know for myself, it's very clean up until about uh, ISO 800. So it should be no problem with the Canon. And I tell you, the Fuji, it's performing really well. As, uh, it's also performing really well. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at the top of this. So we're kind of starting to get to the edges. So you can see that the lens on the 16 to 25 is just that little bit sharper than this. Um, just a little bit sharper, not too much. If we come back out again, maybe go down into the corners here. Go into that corner there as well. And you can see in the bottom corners, yeah, again, the 16 to 25 is a good bit more sharp than this. Now, again, like this is a 16 to 55, but that is the equivalent of a 24 to 70. I don't usually shoot 24 to 70, I usually shoot within the 16 to 35. So, um, I really should be testing on a 10 to 24. We just didn't have that lens at hand at the time. So come back out again. So let's go on over to ISO 400, put the information back up again so you can see the settings. So we've got ISO 400. So the third one for this is ISO 400. And let's have a look again. Now you can see there is a little bit, little bit of noise starting to be introduced into the Fuji. And is it getting any softer? I don't think it is. Yeah, you can see the Canon is still, still razor sharp. Where the uh, Fuji, now I'm not too sure if that's the lens. That could be, could be the lens that's at fault there, more so than the camera. I'm not sure. Let's, come out, let's go into the corner again. Let's have a wee look. Yeah, there's a good bit of a difference between the two, really, isn't there? It's a good bit of a difference. When you look here, not much difference, you know. It's not, it's, it's not screaming at you. There's a, there's a great difference. Um, there's a great bit more distortion on this than there is of this, but that's just down to the lenses again. Uh, relatively to the middle of the image. How are we looking? Yeah, it's a good bit sharper. Canon is a good bit sharper. Um, again, I'm not really happy that it metered so much above uh, the Fuji. I'm not too sure which is which is more right. The, the Canon feels a bit more punchy as well off the mark, but you could always get that in post. It's just a little bit extra of maybe a bit more, a bit more contrast or just don't pull the shadows up as much maybe. Okay, so let's have a look now the next one then. So we're gonna go with ISO 800. So we're probably gonna be pushing this Fuji film uh, now with the ISO, but you can see actually they're metering kind of close now, not as different. Let's have a look. Yeah, the Canon is, is a good bit sharper. Uh, is there much noise? There isn't much noise. Like, I'm gonna have to compare against the ISO 400 and the 800. I'm gonna do that right now, actually. So the third image, let's have a look there and there. So here it is. On the right, we have the Fuji ISO 400 and the Fuji ISO 800. And I think, I, I would nearly say the ISO 800 is a nicer image. So it, it, it must have missed focus a little bit. That's what it kind of looks like there, maybe, does it? Does it miss focus? 
I'm not sure, I'm not too sure of the settings. I really didn't get trying the camera out till after we did the test. We just had the cameras just uh, shooting, trying to get the best light at the time. But not much difference between the ISO 400 and ISO 800. And just to be a bit more transparent as well, I'm gonna open up the Canon ISO 800 and I'm gonna drag in the Canon ISO 400. And let's compare against these two. So we have on the left 400 and on the right 800. Not much difference in these either. Very, very clean actually. Very clean on the ISO front with these. You can see there's actually a good bit more, uh, a good bit more, more noise, but it's not bad noise. So if I go back, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring in now. So we're gonna change from ISO 400 Canon back to the ISO 800 Fuji. Yeah, it's not that much. It's, it's more like a grain, it has a kind of like a grainy look to it. And I had heard that about Fuji as well, that the the, the noise that they have, the ISO, the, the noise on the on the sensor is more like a grain, it has that kind of grain effect, which kind of goes with their whole mantra and their approach with these cameras, that it's they're going back to the old film days. Even how that whole camera works, it reminds me of the Pentax MG that my dad gave me that we used to have as kids. like. Um, so let's have a look here at the ISO 1600 on the Canon. So that's, again, Canon's on the right. I'm gonna try and keep the Canon on the right at all times. So that's image five, isn't it? One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, oops, I didn't mean to press that. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> oh God, one, two, three, four, and five. Drag it, Mark, don't press it. I wish Lightroom had done a thing where you click for one and then you click the second one instead of doing this dragging. It doesn't make any sense, it's not really, it's not a great UI, if I'm going to be honest about it. Now, that's not bad. That's not that's not bad. I've seen the Canon 650D, which I used to own, and that would give a lot more color. Like, there's two for me. There's two kinds of noises. There's 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 um, with a noise. There's grain, and then there's color noise. And color noise will give you uh, these purple, these magenta fringings, and you'll see like uh, pixels of magentas all over the place, you know, little blues and magentas all around. You can see the chromatic aberration around on the corner there. Um, wasn't much contrast on this image either. If you go into the Canon, it's gonna be a good bit cleaner. So this Canon, is it comparable to maybe the 800? So 1600, I'll go up against four. I know I'm jumping around the shop here, but I just wanna do this kind of quickly. Yeah, you could nearly say that the 6D at 1600 is comparable to the Fuji at 800, which for APS-C, I tell you, that is amazing because you couldn't, you, the 650D is not comparable like that. I can tell you that for a fact. And um, that's one of the reasons why I switched to the, to the 6D originally was I wanted a camera with a better ISO performance. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm just switching back to the Fuji. So yeah, um, let's go into the corners. So we know it's gonna be soft, we know it's gonna be soft, but how much softer? Because the Canon does get quite soft once the noise starts to come in. And we'll just match these up. Yeah, it's still soft, but I think it's workable, to be honest. I do really think it, it, that is workable. I'd say when you add a bit of sharpening, clean up the, clean up the image, this will be fine once you uh, use some Lens corrections as well through Lightroom that would actually clean up fine, I would think. So let's go on to ISO 3200, which I don't use all that often. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. That's it. I, I clicked that one just to double check, but I didn't need to. I'll drag in now. Okay, so really interested in this. Yeah, now this is looking like what I would consider an APS-C sensor shooting at 1600. This is what I usually see with the 70D. This is what I usually see. Uh, actually, I would see a lot worse with the 650D. Um, I would be happy with that kind of performance. Don't forget the conditions for these were better than ideal. You know, we have, I have, we had really good light. 
on this very soft flight the sun had gone in behind a set of clouds the sun is also lighting our subject we're not being backlit so the the sun is uh, is lighting our subjects with really good light and that is performing pretty well i would be happy with that now i didn't think i would be this happy with the footage i'm going to be honest with that which right now i didn't think i'd be as happy with this so i'm just going to go into the corners again yeah it's it's pretty good now okay so now let's go into the next test so we've seen what the what how they perform so the next test is let me see i started shooting two stops under the test the dynamic range so that's what we're going to do now so we're going to take this out of reference we're gonna to go to we'll go to the worst one first and walk our way back. Okay, so the worst one's obviously gonna be the highest ISO. So we're gonna just bring in these basic settings, bring that down a little bit, and it's more of the shadows. Gonna bump the shadows up plus 100. Gonna bring the exposure back up again. See if we can really punch this up. I would never do this normally. Uh, add some clarity because that can add some more to the noise, vibrance in again. This is just standard stuff I would usually do. So just editing quickly here. Add in the blacks. Oh, okay, over here. There you go. Uh, don't need too many blacks in it. And then, yeah, that looks fine. Do we need to do it with the highlights? Just a little bit. And, okay, so we're gonna grab that one. And then we're just gonna double check. Is this, yeah, it is, yeah. So we're gonna take this one, I'm gonna select the Fuji, and I'm gonna synchronize really, really quickly here. Just not really doing much on it. Now, let's have a look at this then. So uh, we go here, and then we're drawing in this one. So the Fuji, I'll come back out of this reference again, that Fuji needs to be touched up a bit. Uh, oh, whew, that's quite noisy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna bring the highlights up, I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit more. I really wanna match the Canon as much as I can. So we're up at nearly, close to two stops up, and it was two stops under, so. And let's go back here, hit our A for reference. Drag this one in, it is already in. Um, yeah, again, I go back to the to the color science. Color science is quite different. You've got these teal blues going on here. This has a, this has a bit of a film simulation. I just wanna double check, it doesn't have that. I'm just gonna select this one. I know I'm still in the reference. I just wanna double check, is there anything here for film simulation? No. Don't know if there's any hidden. I've never, I've never worked with. Uh, just select this back to Canon. I've never worked with Fuji files before, so I'm very new to this. I'll have to double check with photographers I know uh, as to what way they actually process their work. So that's how we look. Now that is, you see, that's horrible. But so is the so is the Canon. But you can see there, the Canon is a good bit better. Yeah, it's a lot noisier. Than, yeah, it's a it's a lot noisier than I thought it was going to be, considering how well it was doing on 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 the um, on the last file. If I bring this in here, actually, you know what I'll do? Come back at a reference again, and we'll just synchronize and then just change the settings a little bit. Obviously, you don't need to bring that up to plus two. Double click in, boom. Okay, and bring the shadows down. Yeah, that looks fine there. Okay, so I've the I've the I've them edits, them slight edits added to the Canon. So now we'll just copy that over to the 3200 ISO. So this is the for the cleaner image. So now we can really compare. So go back to Canon, and we'll proof. Don't know why that selected that one. Should select this one. And so here we go. So here we have the ideal situation. Both shots were shot perfectly. And again, you can see the color science is quite different between these two, but uh, noise-wise, these are fine. Yeah, they, I think both of these are usable. Obviously, the, the Canon's much, much cleaner, but you'd expect that with a full-frame sensor, but... Um, yeah, the Fuji, the, that is that is usable. I would, I would That would print fine, because I just printed up a photo rare not so long ago. Uh, during the week 
of some astrophotography I took and the conditions were a lot worse than that. So I want to go back to the other Canon. Let's see this now. So here's the Canon 3200 ISO and it's been boosted up by two stops. And this scenario here where it's been boosted up is normally where you're gonna, uh, you're gonna come across that kind of scenario when you're shooting Milky Way shots and all. I like the noise. I actually like the noise and I'd nearly shoot for that for a particular look. Instead of, uh, instead of coming down, so if I just move this over here a bit. So instead of coming down in your image and where is it? I can't even remember where it is. I think it's in the vignette. Yeah, here. If you're adding in grain, so if I add in grain to this shot, so it's gonna add into this Canon shot. Uh, if I add in the grain, so maybe about that much. I compare that against the Fuji. Maybe if I make the grain size bigger. So there you go, look at that. That looks, I mean, that's only really quickly. If I was, if I had a bit more time, I'd, I'd really fine tune that, but that's what that looks like. And yeah, the, uh, the images are still usable. Both of them are very, very usable. So let's go and We'll take the settings from this Canon, so we'll come back out of here, this Canon, and I'm going to synchronize it across them three and across these three here. These are all shot two stops under, but the ISO is reducing per shot. So if we go into this one, you can see we're now at ISO 1600, and we just reference that, and we're going to go to the next Fuji one. So it's a bit, the Fuji one's quite dark, isn't it? I'll just leave it, I'm not even going to change it because I really want to just have a look at this quickly. Um, again, not bad at all. Went to the next Canon, and into the next Fuji. You can see it's getting cleaner already. So we've actually jumped, I've made a big leap there. I went from uh, 1600 to ISO uh, 200. Uh, we don't need to we don't need to analyze them in all the steps you just need to see the worst and the best and that's really good that's really good you could probably push that more so then if we actually go to ISO 100 and drag in the ISO 100 file and I'm going to boost this more again uh, so we're just going to come out of the reference go into the Fuji and I'm going to boost this up to match the Canon so again up to almost Do you think it needs to be boosted a bit more again, does it? Yep. Yeah, so there's two and almost two and a half stops of light being added to the shot at ISO 100. And plus sh the shadows plus 100. You don't do that with a Canon shot. Let's have a look at the Canon. So the Canon's here. And I'm gonna go and reference. So Canon's on your right. And our Fuji's on the left. That kind of needs to come up a little bit more. Just to keep them matched. So we've gone up, uh, I'll leave it at even two, well, about two. So about two stops on the Canon and a two and a half stops on the Fuji. And let's zoom in and see. And whew. I think with these two, you'd be splitting hairs with these two. I really do think you'd be splitting hairs with these two. I just can't believe the performance of this Fuji. And I think I'm sold. There's a lot of features on the Fuji as well that I haven't even discussed that were, I was shown yesterday by Remy. Um, so yeah, so I shot the photos yesterday and I'm just actually testing the files the following day. And these are amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I'm so surprised with these. I think I'm sold. I think I'm going to be investing in Fuji and selling my camera, my Canon gear. Well, there you have it. Uh, quite an eye opener. I don't know about for you, but for me, that was an eye opener. I never thought that an APS-C sensor could stack up that well against a full frame camera. Um, staggering. It's amazing where we've come to in technology when it comes to the, a camera that small, like. The camera is no bigger than this. This is the old SLR, this is a Pentax MG. It's no bigger than this with a sensor that's smaller than that of a Canon 6D and it performs just as good as a Canon 6D. So I have to personally say I'm sold by it completely. I'm actually now considering possibly switching from Canon, like I'm using the Canon 70D here. I have a Canon 6D right here. 
I'm now considering actually switching to that system. So, I don't know, stay tuned to my channel and see what I actually do. Do I stay with Canon or do I go to Fuji? This video is a great argument for going to the Fuji site. I must say a big thank you to Remy for letting me use his camera on the day. Without him, I had no camera to test on because I either couldn't find someone who had an X-T2 uh, available to rent or was willing to rent it. There was a couple of places that just wouldn't rent it out. So I found it very hard to rent uh, Fuji film cameras within Ireland. So without Remy, I couldn't have done this. So be sure to check out his page. He's a fantastic photographer on Instagram. I've left his Instagram handle in the description below and you'll find a link straight to him. I hope you liked that. I hope you got something from it. I haven't seen a video like this done about Fuji versus full frame. So uh, if you like it, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell to get notified when I post. I post up every week. Uh, check me out on Facebook, Instagram and my site, my name, plus photography equals.com, markduffyphotography.com, and until the next time, later, Gators.